Hi everyone and welcome along to another video. If you remember a couple of months ago I posted a video on a Tech 465 repair. Um, I would bought a couple of oscilloscopes and one I managed to get working. This was the second one and this definitely doesn't work. Um, the seller told me it didn't work at the time and opening the case if you remember out in the garden we saw there was a couple of badly burnt components on the uh, lower PCB board. My question to myself is, do I just you know, forget it ever working um, and just use it as a parts mule for the other scope or do I get it working? And the question for myself is, and I've been sort of pondering this for the last month or so is, am I capable of getting it working? Um, I'm not confident that I am. Um, you know, when, when components go up in smoke like that um, it can be pretty terminal, but um, never one to let things defeat me, even if it takes me some time to do it. Um, I'm going to have a go at seeing, you know, at least um, putting some power to this and seeing what happens. It might be right down the bottom of the garden, as far away from the house as possible, and the missus might have to be out, but uh, we shall put power to it and see what happens. Other than that, it's going to end its days as like a parts mule. Now, this is a XBBC machine. Um, it's got a couple of extra options over my other one. It's got the sync separation and the TV line um, option on it, um, which my other one hasn't. And this one was actually made by Telequipment in Guernsey. Not, uh, it's not a US made scope, it was made here in the UK. So Let's go through a few things. Um, cosmetically, it's not bad. There's some writing missing off the Channel 1 Volts Division skirt here. This BNC is taken a whack here. It's bent over to one side. This knob, the variable knob, is stuck. Um, all these seem to work okay. Some little bits of writing missing, or it doesn't really matter. Um, this knob here. The inner rotates with the outer, so that's probably taken a, a hit somewhere. Um, that knob's cracked underneath, it's not a problem, we can super glue that together. Um, and other than the outer case, which if you remain remember I took the outer case off this one and put it on the working one, um, and the case for this just needs like a panel hammer on it and you know just beat a few little dents out. This doesn't look bad. What's sort of encouraged me, encouraging me is this is complete. Um, there's no parts missing as yet. Um, even the fuses are all intact. Um, and there's just that nasty burn. So I'm going to turn it over and we'll have a look at the nasty burn. Right, here we are. What we're looking at here is the uh, A9 interface board, which is, sits on the bottom of the Tech 465. If you're following along at home, even though this is an earlier serial number, I've got the manual for the 250,000 um, and above serial numbers. I suspect the circuit's pretty much the same in this area. And the circuit we're looking for or looking at is the CRT circuit towards the sort of middle of the manual. Um, and the components are CR1465, which is a 1N4152 30 volt diode, and R1463, which is a 1.2K resistor. And I'm just going to zoom in on those for you. If you can see there, that is the burnt area. So it's these two here. And what's puzzling me is. There's no high voltages in this area, or oh, sorry, going to those components. I think they both sit on about 15 volts. Uh, yeah. Now, one is connected, one side is connected to the beam finder. Um, so the diode, when you press the beam finder button, it connects to that diode which in other, otherwise is out of circuit and the resistor R1463 
is connected to the intensity control and I, I, I just can't work out what's, what's actually happening here to make those fry let's zoom out again as you can see the whole area here is quite dusty and it hasn't been cleaned for probably ever and I just wonder whether some high voltage from this area here had, had arced and burnt these out but I don't know why it would so I'm this is what I was trying to say I don't know whether I'm actually capable of fixing this you know and of course I'm gonna to have to take this board out to see what's on the other side or sort of what damage is on the other side but what I'm going to do first is uh, we'll give it a clean um, and see just how bad this area actually is so um, I've got some uh, Halfords electrical contact cleaner which is isopropyl alcohol despite what anyone tells you you, you actually can't buy isopropyl alcohol over the chemist counter anymore you need a prescription I went down to my local boots and asked um, yeah so anyway this is exactly what it is and it's about three four pounds ten uh, right so I'm just gonna give all this a good old spray and we'll see how it cleans up do that off camera right we're all done I've cleaned up the uh, high voltage section and in fact I did the whole board now if we zoom in onto the problem components oh, that doesn't like that one it's come out a little bit there we go if, you, if we focus on these two now this this I said was the diode I think was was on the bottom in fact I was wrong it's the resistor the diode as you can see is looks in quite good condition and in fact it conducts so um, I'm not sure if it still works obviously um, but it certainly does something the resistor of course is done and in fact it was the resistor that is the issue um, I've checked the resistor of course and it's it's pretty much gone it's it's holding on it should be 1.2k um, it's now at 47 ohms so um, there's something still there but clearly it's never going to work again properly the traces I've checked and they all seem to be working correctly there's continuity all the way along um, the board is quite crispy I can dig a little bit out with with a scalpel so this area must have got extremely hot um, there's no con continuity between here and here um, there probably is now but I put a bit of pencil lead on there anyway um, so I'll use the other end so there's no continuity between these these two ends here which is good um, it doesn't seem anything to be anything wrong around the high voltage section um, let's zoom out again um, I've checked um, the capacitors which oh, sorry so this is what I've done so far um, I've checked the power supply capacitors which are up here they all seem to have something in them none of them are short um, I've checked several other capacitors around this area none of those are short um, I've checked whether the power switch is operational and it is, um, I get a resistance reading when the switch is on open on the meter when it's not so at least um, you know all the way up to the primary works there's nothing blown and that that still gets me actually despite this despite this the fuse didn't blow and the transformer doesn't appear to have been blown I've not checked the secondaries really yet um, I've checked several other components around here, capacitors and resistors and stuff, and everything seems to be fine and giving readings. Um, I suspect I need to take the board out to see what is the problem. Um, you know, sorry, if there is a problem on the other side of the board, 
um, and there might be a loose wire that's touched something I don't know you can't see down inside um, and it's pretty much a devil's nightmare to get this board out so I've got a bit of a conundrum do I just replace that resistor and uh, give it some voltage and see what happens I'm not sure I'm certainly going to replace um, certainly going to replace these tantalum capacitors here to forestall um, the fuse blowing um, but yeah I'm not sure if we have a look at the circuit diagram in a minute and I'll zoom in on that hopefully you can see it as I'm rocking about I've got to find where I am actually right you can see pretty much in the centre of the screen CR1465 is the diode we were looking at uh, on the PCB and R1463, 1.2k resistor, is the one that's burnt out. Um, on the other side of that you've got CR1463 and you've got the 5 volt coming in and B delayed switch on that side and on the other side of the resistor you've got the intensity control at 15 volts it, they, I, and this is what's getting me if it had been a capacitor shorted or something I could understand immediately why things were going wrong if I didn't say before these scans actually come from um, Artec Media and I'll put the link uh, in the description very very good scans they're about fourteen dollars and it's like a 52 meg download far superior to anything you'll find for free on the internet um, the ones on the internet are all very dark and you can't see the components um, numbers on the PCB layouts these are absolutely brilliant scans um, pretty good service the guys in the US um, I think I had to wait five or six hours, obviously because there's a time difference. But yeah, very good, very good quality. Um, as I said, this is the uh, manual for the higher serial numbers. I really should buy the lower serial numbers um, one as well um, to help me with this one. So. I'm pretty sure what I'm going to do next is uh, replace this resistor and um, put some voltage into it and see what happens but that resistor did not go by itself it, you know there's something upstream of that that caused that um, and it's that that I'm slightly struggling with my forte is not with um, complicated or very complicated uh, oscilloscopes uh, I'm, you know, I'm used to working with valve radios and valve test equipment, transistors. Um, you know, especially something of this uh, complexity. But you know, a circuit is a circuit. Um, I'll keep looking and see where you know, see if anything else comes to mind. But if you're watching this and you've seen this problem or can suggest something. I'd be extremely grateful to hear from you. Um, you know, there's little point in me struggling with this um, if someone knows the answer or can suggest something. Well, that's it then. Um, you might see this again, hopefully. Um, it might be a month or six months or, or whatever um, that I come back to it. Um, you know, if I put the video up, someone might come across it in a few weeks or, or months and say, oh yeah, I've seen that and it's, you know, you need to replace all the capacitors in the power supply. Yeah, I probably know that anyway, but, you know, thanks f for that because that would be very, very useful. Um, but, um, yeah. Right, thanks for watching and um, hopefully I'll see you soon.